So here we are at the home place of C3R Farms. This is not our typical Saturday in the summer. Normally, if it's uh, above 90 degrees in the summertime, we are on the water somewhere. But we had a rare rainstorm. And uh, Rixon, who you got there? Texas. Texas kitty, one of our little ranch kitties that stays at the barn. So typically in the summer, we're always on the water, but today we were blessed with some awesome rain. So we are super pumped. So this Saturday, <laughs> Ryder was saddling this horse and didn't get it on good. So this particular Saturday, Rickson, you can get on. We got some good rain and we have spent the day at home just relaxing, resting. The temperature cooled off to about 79 degrees. So this is what we, this is what we typically do in the fall. We get all the horses caught and we go for a little ride. So we'll show you around the farm. So a lot of people don't realize, but um, mine and Rusty's worlds kind of collided. So we do spend a lot of time on the water because that's how he grew up. Competition water skiing and being on the lake. And I grew up doing this. <laughs> I grew up breaking horses, barrel racing, spending a lot of time on our family farm. And that's really all I knew until I met Rusty. So um, kind of a change of pace. So our boys do both. They rodeo, they cowboy, and they water ski. So most of our videos so far have all been on the water um, and just spending time outside in the summer. And now it's starting to cool off, so you'll see a lot more of this. And uh, this is Ryder's horse, Lena. My horse, Rojo. Rickson's horse, Spot. He's hurt right now, so he's actually riding my niece's horse. But uh, we'll take you on a little ride across the farm. So a little history on our farm. Rusty and I looked for land and wanted to buy this farm for years and years and years um finally got it bought and two years ago um, i think june of 19 so we're going on three years now and my dream was to build this barn there actually used to be an old barn that sat there on that old rock foundation well and uh, i was able to get the, all their trees removed that had grown up over the years preserve the old concrete foundation and build my new barn on it. So got the barn built first. We made some roads going through the farm and eventually right now the plan is to build a house right there. So it's okay. And this is our donkey Bolivar. He's actually supposed to be a zonkey, half zebra, half donkey. <laughs> and he's just kind of the uh, farm mascot. He goes with us on trail rides, unfortunately. He's supposed to stay out with the cows because donkeys are herd protectors. They typically save um, baby calves from coyotes. They run off wild dogs. So we bought Bolivar to protect for the for hundred dollars to protect the cows, and I don't know how much protect any of those. But here's the little start to our farm. We um, have them all divided up into pasture numbers. We did a lot of cross fencing. So our cows can go on different sections at different times. So pasture one, this is pasture two. We'll take you up to the top, the next hill, to the valley, and then the food plot in the hayfield. Here's some of the cows, we're coming up on them now. So we joke that we have a funny farm. So here we are on a trail ride, and we have a donkey, and we have kittens. Well, some people have, some people have uh, dogs that go with the Montreal rides. Apparently we have cats because here comes Texas and Slinky to go on the trip ride. We have a couple different creeks that run around the borders of our farm that our animals use as their water source. But this one has just been one dry puddle right here. Like one, it's been dry on both ends. And this is the first time I've seen it flowing in probably three months. So. So far, so good. And that's one of our smaller creeks. We're gonna go back to the back and check one of our bigger ones. The boys are trying to catch their kittens to take them back to the barn, but one thing we're doing since we've been in this horrible drought um, is checking our creeks that we've got for water source for our animals. And uh, so thankful to see some water flowing again. This goes up to our hay pasture up and around. We'll check that out in a minute. But in this area, it goes to the valley. Um, 
man, after that being dry for the last however many months and all of the deer and the coyotes and the turkeys and the birds and the snakes and the critters all having to share these tiny little water sources with 50 something head of cows and horses, it's just, uh, it's been kind of stressful. So very, very blessed, very thankful for this rain and that we've got some water. This is a really pretty section of the creek, but I'm heading up to what is normally our food plot. So I have it fenced off so that our cows can't get in here. Normally this time of year, there's um, really pretty crops coming up to feed the deer so that we can deer hunt. And that's kind of our little section where we can put out corn and hunt. And this year, of course, it looks like this. It is, <laughs> Rovo must have saw an animal. It is absolutely bone dry. It's pretty sad. So as soon as they lift the burn van, we're gonna burn it off, till it up, and try to get something else going. Not sure what wild animal he sees, but he's awful jumpy. Could be because he hasn't been ridden in a while. But gotta get this area back. When we originally bought the farm, we just had um, one middle section of it and later got the opportunity about almost a year ago, I think it was September last year, to buy this additional joining piece. And it was kind of tough financially, but well, wow. when you see stuff like that, we just pulled up in this hay field and there's deer just jumping and running everywhere. It makes it worth it. Rusty shot a deer out here last year. We got to do like a spot and stop as a family. Um, shot a deer, I think 200 plus yards, 300. It was a good shot, but right now the grass is not in good shape at all. I need to spray and need to fertilize and bush hog, but It'll get there. It's just a lot of work. Owning a farm. Yeah, the deer was all at the end. Well, we jump on our pool. Yep. Farms are a lot of work, but man, it sure is rewarding. Wouldn't trade this lot for anything. Here is one of our little ponds the main water source out here in the hayfield and you can see how dry it is man super super low but praise the lord it got a little more full today there's always turtles and frogs did you just see that thing right there that gets head under what was it might have been a snapping turtle or a snake may have been might have been a snapping turtle you think your brother's gonna find us he had to go take his cat back, but we left the gate open so he'll know where we are. All right, boys, tell us what part of the farm we're on now. We're in the valley. The and valley. Valley. Whoa. Well, is where the cows, they used them. to like to be. Yeah, they still do. Yeah, they the, like the valley. The valley, the long field. Yeah, we have a lot of names for it, but it goes a pretty good distance. And there's a really neat old road that runs up just in those trees. We'll show you in a little bit. We call it the War Road. When we bought the land, they told us that there used to be a road that connected the White River, which is a couple pastures over. Um, a road that connected the White River all the way to St. Louis. And that people back during the Civil War took that road. So it's actually really, really neat. I think that they levied this to grow cotton back however long ago. So there's a levee that runs along the creek bank and this levee that makes the road. Um, so it's pretty neat. We try to keep it up, keep it in good shape. <laughs> One of our horses' favorite things to do when they get in the creek is to play like little kids. They like to fall and splash at the water. And usually when one starts, they, they all start doing it. our pet donkey that goes everywhere we go. Is Oakley going to play in the water? Yep, there he goes. And they also do So here is the water road. It uh, runs the whole length of the valley. Spooky looking back there, but 
with the tree cover on in the summer. It gets really neat. It seems like wildlife really like it too. There's always deer tracks and paw prints and coon tracks and turkey feathers, my favorite. We kind of make it a game collecting turkey feathers. When we're out trail riding, it's one of our favorite. Favorite little things to pick up on the trail. And here come the cows migrating down. They've been up on the uh, top hills all morning, waiting out the rainstorm. And now they, they like to move um, from the valley back to the front, yeah, usually the a couple times a day. And here they are migrating down. And the top hills are just above those trees. Just above those trees. That's where we're going next. I'm letting the boys lead the way up some of the woods trails. We've got quite a few that connect the valley to the top hills, but the boys actually built this one on their four-wheelers last year. They were coming up in the woods in the winter on their dirt bikes and four-wheelers. Easy, it's a little bit muddy. And uh, they cut some of this down, then Rusty got in here on the skid steer and cleared it a little more. So peaceful riding in the woods. Uh oh. Do you run it? Hey, Bub, it's right here. The cows also make good trails down, so sometimes we have to go through some limbs, but not too bad. to the top of the hill. And there's some more of the cows. Just above those trees. Ignore my awful weeds up here. Normally this time of year I've got this lush pretty grass but didn't get it sprayed with the drought. So we just got back from our ride and normally I'm not in extra toughs and shorts but I've been working at the barn so anyway it's not safe to ride in these boots I don't recommend it but we had a great ride and now it's time to put the horses up get everybody in the saddle and call it a day. A spot. <laughs> Kitty. Kitty, kitty. This is our barn chores in the evening. This is what we do. So we come up here and we, uh, we feed all the horses because everybody has to get fed. This is the, uh, this is where we feed them. This is the bucket. So we feed them out. We put the, we've had a raccoon problem, so we just put the cat food in there. So, wait, this is another one. We have two buckets. Oh yeah, here we go. So, I get all of these buckets and I fill them up halfway because we don't want to get the horses overweight. And, and, we we fill, and we fill them up to like this line right here. Yeah. We want, we want the horses to be in shape. So, yeah. See them halfway, yeah. One sheet for everybody. One, two,
He said, he says, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Give me your food. Give me your food. <laughs> Give me your food. <laughs> Let's go get another bucket now. See, we got a little, right got a little horseshoes to, for the little watch. Okay. So one thing that we're going to have to do is, before Spot goes up to eat, is he has to get a couple shoes pulled off. Um, my dad is a farrier or a horseshoer for a living, so growing up, I went with him quite a bit, traveling and to and from barns and learning how to shoe horses. And right now, Spot has a shoe that is sprung, which means the nails have come loose and it's about to fall off. So if he steps, he could actually step on a nail if we leave this shoe in a bad condition. A lot of people have to call a farrier to come out and do that. We've learned how to do it ourselves. So I'm about to show you how to pull the shoe. And cut. So my dad would not have of this method if he didn't I'm crouched down behind the horse, his back foot, not safe. Spot is 24. He's very old, he's very calm, he's very broke, and he's been messed with a lot. So, normally this would be a dangerous position, but I like to, what they call, cut the clinches from right here. And like right now, Spot's got a pretty bad chunk of his foot cut back. So, I'm gonna just cut these nails like this by twisting them with these. And then cut this bad piece of foot. It's kind of like a fingernail to us. When our fingernails get too long, they get brittle. This dry ground's been really tough on horses' feet this summer. Another problem with the drought. It even affects the horses' feet. So then I'm going to cut each one of these clenches. Typically, there are six uh, nails, six to six to eight in a horse's shoe and Spot has got bad feet, he always has. So normally all we can get in his is only six. We do three on each side, so. So when we're gonna pick up a horse's foot, my dad's always taught me <laughs> not to have cats down in the way, but to start at their hip so they know that you're here and run your hand down their hip like this, down to their hock and then down to the portion of the leg where you're gonna grab and he's gonna pick that foot up and let him relax. He's an older horse with arthritis, kinda of hurts his leg to get in an awkward position. So we're gonna let him take his time and be real easy and real gentle, letting him get back here so we can work on this foot. Also, this sprung shoe, see how it's kicked over sideways? It's made his foot tender, but I cut the clinches really well. The shoe was really loose. And so we grab it, we bend down toward the toe. Here, back up just a little bit and you bend down toward the toe each time until you get every single nail pulled out. Voila, we have the shoe off. So it's end of the night and we're closing the barn doors, calling it a night. We had a good ride. We had a good work day up here at the barn. I got a bunch of gravel moved, did some cleaning. All the horses are eating. They're all in their stalls, kind of tucked down for the night. We like to leave the fans on for them because they're kind of spoiled. Okay, everybody's fed. It's time to go get us some supper now. Boys, y'all ready to close it up? Yes, ma'am. Got everything put up for the night. <laughs> That's all, folks. And here we are heading home. Rickson likes his uh, razor. Daughter likes his dirt bike.